I want to I want to draw from a couple of media examples. One of them is George Floyd. Um, when you look at a situation like that in in particular, um, in your view, what happened in the George Floyd situation from a policing perspective? Were the police officers just doing what they were trained to do? Is it bad policing? Was it fear? Is it adrenaline or or something else? What's your oh, like? Just just so, let's let's look at George Floyd that situation for just a moment. So, in in my opinion, number one, the other officers on the scene didn't realize that what this one guy was doing could result in death, number one. Mm -hmm. We're not trained to realize that action could result in death, okay? Mm -hmm. that, that was missing. We, we're not trained on that, okay? Mm -hmm. Secondly, that's him. That ain't me. He did that, I didn't, okay? Mm -hmm. We were not taught the responsibility of each other right we were not taught that when we see this we have to react not not just to the bad guy but to the good guy we have to say we're not trained we were, we were not trained to say get off of him you're doing it improperly your technique is not approved we were taught to go hey when they call me in and ask me what did i see i'm going to tell the truth don't you know i'm not going to lie that that's how we dealt with guys like him the officers we simply said, uh, somebody will go back and say, hey, sorry, I just want you to know he had his knee on his neck. I just want, I, I don't want no part of it. You have people like that. And then you have people who just sit back and go, they asked me, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. And then, of course, you had your few that would just say, uh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> oh so, uh, and, and, you know, that's the, that Ben Bulani talked about, right? You know, we're all out there to, to try to help and do things better. Yeah. Not there to hurt each other. So. That, that's the hard part is, is, you know, it's which side are you on, you know, which right. side are you on, you know, this guy was a bad guy. Yeah, something bad happened, but, but as we see today, we've got to police ourselves. We've mm -hmm. got to say, hey, stop. No, you stop. Bad guy, give me a minute. Let me talk to my partner. Partner, put your gun away. You know, you, we have to be taught to do that. Yeah. That hasn't been taught. And that's why that, that happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that happened. Wow. From a from a police from a police technique perspective, the guy's knee is on the guy's neck. Okay, for eight eight minutes and seven forty two, seven forty six or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we counted actually. It was started off at eight. They 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 ran the tape back and came oh, back and it? said it was actually seven <laughs> minutes and forty some seconds. It'd take long. But 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 still like. Is it from a technique perspective, is it proper tech? I mean, is it just proper technique to like to have your neck on have sorry, to have your knee on somebody's neck? I've never been taught that actually. Yeah. I've, I've never been taught under any circumstance um, that that's the technique to use. It's funny, I, I, I pitch, I go back to my training mm -hmm. and I remember handcuffing and blading your side and putting your knees, but it was always between the shoulder blade. It was, I just, mm -hmm. I never recall. Now, we've never been trained to do that. That's, yeah. that's just, you know, that's what one person chooses to do. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not training. Yeah. No, th thank you for that. I, I think that that's helpful because, you know, as I look at it, so I, and, and, and I've, done, I've done a little bit of consulting with law enforcement, actually. And, and one of the things that I learned is that in a, in a threat situation or in a, in a situation of high stress or where there could be potentially be a threat, you put the threat down. Clearly, the threat was down, right? right. So, you know, like there's, and there were, and <laughs> he had backup. It's not like he was alone, right? right? Right. So, if we were to look at it forensically, it just, I feel like, wow, there's just a lot that went wrong in that particular situation. Right. You, yeah. you know, and um, wow. So, I wanna look, I wanna talk about another situation that happened just recently Rayshard Brooks. You're, you're familiar with the, with the case? The, uh, the Atlanta case, right? The Atlanta case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and so s similar situation, but it starts out, starts out, fr you know, okay, falls asleep. He's drunk at, in a Wendy's drive through The police are called probably, you know, probably an excessive, you know, response to that situation. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Call the guy an Uber, you know, but you, you probably saw, you probably saw what happened. 
um, he, you know, he, you know, actually, you know, tased one of the one of the officers, and like, so it escalated, it escalated very badly, mm-hmm. and then and then they ended up shooting him. Um, again, from a from a technical police work perspective, walk us through that. You know, what do they do right? Do they do wrong? I mean, is is a ta- is a taser a, a a a deadly threat weapon? You know, like, so t- tell t- you know, talk us through that just from a technical police work perspective. Wow, this this is a this is a tough one. Mm. It, re- it really is a tough one. Um, it really is tough, but it goes back to you know what you're trained to do and how much time you have to process things in your brain. Yeah, how much time do you really have? Mm. I I mean, for me, Monday morning quarterback is easy. I can sit back and watch it Monday morning and go, yeah, why did this even go this far? Right. Number one, why, why are we here? The guy is speaking clearly, falls asleep, robotic policing, robotic policing. I don't know you. And I'm going to, I know that the law says that if you, if the, the keys are readily available and you're in behind the wheel, even though your car is not moving, that I can make a DWI arrest. Mm. And, and that's all you're thinking is I've got all the elements of a crime and I'm gonna make this, and I'm gonna be a hero and I'm gonna, you know, check it off that I, I, I locked them up. Yeah. That's the first thing is, is why not help them? When I take the whole different approach and go, all right, forget the DWI. I, I don't even care about DWI. I got you, the car's not moving, guy let's get you where you need to be. Mm. Let's get you help. Call some, they, they, actually, Rashad was right. He's like, hey, I, I'm, I'm, can you call some? I'm right down the block. I mean, he's speaking clearly. Yeah. We shouldn't have, as law enforcement, allowed that to escalate. We should have let it stay here. Mm. We should have we let it stay here. But that's me Monday morning quarterbacking, right? That's me going Monday morning quarterback. Now, we don't do that. Yeah. So then, it's, then it escalates, and we want to make the arrest. Now, yeah. Certainly. It was me on either side. If I'm behind the wheel of the car, I'm going to cooperate. I'm, I'm me personally, how I grew up, who I am. Mm. I'm going to go, this is what I have to do. Um, but I don't expect him to be me. Same thing, the officer. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have shot, okay? But that's me. Right. But, but when, when, you're, when you're thinking you're doing police work and you think you're doing it the way you were trained and you got a person that was, you, had, thought, you thought you had in custody, start to run from you, turns to shoot at you, can your brain really say, hey, even if you shoot me, that thing can't hurt me? Mm. Or can it? His training is, don't let that object hit me. I'll be done. Mm. And then I'll lose. And then I don't get to go home tonight. Yeah. I can't judge him for making that kind of thought process, you know, having that thought process and making the wrong decision to shoot. I'm, I know. I know. I, I retired from an injury. Of yeah. the guy that I could have shot. I, I didn't shoot I, because I didn't, it wasn't the right time. And I'm fortunate to make that right decision. Because we could be sitting here talking about, and remember the case with Powell back in right. 2005 when he shot an unarmed guy. Right, right. So, so I made the right decision and I don't want to judge him for making the wrong. Mm. That's a tough decision to make. Yeah. Very tough decision to make. And I, I think if he was trained better, Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. But how can you train for a scenario that you don't ever can ever imagine? I just right. couldn't imagine being in a training academy or scenario and they say, and then the guy takes your taser and runs away. <laughs> That's where the training would stop is the training would stop with, would you shoot him as he runs away with your taser? And then everybody in the class would go, yeah, 90, 99% of the class would go, no, no, you know, let him go. You know, you got his driver's license, his car, go get your taser the next day. When he, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But I couldn't imagine the training instructor having the forethought to say, but what if he turned and shot that taser toward you? Mm. Can you process? Is he a good shot? Is the taser really aimed at me? Is it just aimed in the air to scare me? Mm. Now that he's aimed it to scare you, is that enough to shoot him? You can't yeah. train for that. You know what I mean? You can try to train for it. So therefore, I choose not to judge. Yeah. You know, 
it's, 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 it's too much. Yeah. Too much unless the officer was really equipped with the tools to make the right decision. Yeah. That, that was tough. That yeah. was tough. Yeah. That really was, that really was a tough one. A lot of us, a lot of, especially, you know, black officers, and I've talked to many of them. Yeah. Some of us says, man, he shouldn't have shot that guy. And the other are going, if he had shot at you, you would think, I mean, you, you, you know that gun can, you know that can put you on the ground. Right. And, we, and we, we're, we're kind of like 50-50 with it. We're like, ah, I don't think I'd have taken a shot. I know I wouldn't have taken a shot. Mm. I, in fact, I wouldn't have gave chase. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just so, let him get so one thing, go, right? One thing, you, one thing you learn when you get this is <laughs> I'm going to call my buddies back at the department and they're going to bring out this big tank. They're going to catch you at three o'clock in the morning, sleep, right. and then we're going to make an arrest. I'm not going to chase you when I know who you are. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, that's, but, yeah. But that's, that's from growing up in the community and seeing mm -hmm. the other side of it, you know? That's not. I, I, I can't expect everybody to feel that way. Everybody wants to chase and say, I got them. But I, I, I credit, I mean, white and black officers who taught me early on. Where's it going to go? Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, the kid runs from him. Where's it going to go? Then you go get a warrant for that. I mean, you know, you get them later. You know, <laughs> live the fight another day. <laughs> Everything. That